Oh, that's right. It is Wednesday at 7.10. Now it's three times the bag with his early bag picks. Talking about Jimmy Yo. Jimmy, the bag, don't drag. Got a bet now, early pick now, go to get now. Leche, 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 Jimmy, the bag. Don't drag out. Go to bed now. What? Go to pick now. Hey. Get them all now. Let's Let's That's right. <laughs> Good morning, bag. I, you know what? This song is starting to grow on me, man. It's really starting to grow on me. Oh, people are loving it. Oh. People are loving it. Maxwell Smart in the chat. Spectacular NCAA basketball. Camera yes. On the, on the Switch chat. He's loving that song, man. He's singing it all the time. By the way, uh, there's uh, Max also on uh, uh, Twitch. I uh, I was on uh, Southern, by the way, uh, too, last night. People are like, well, what are you talking about? What does that mean? What does Southern mean? Oh, it just means if you took nine and a half, ten points, you were fine. If you took, <laughs> if you took Hofstra, you were fine. Uh, by the, but if you took St. Mary's last night thinking getting nine and a half, ten points was good, uh, that wasn't as good because Gonzaga showed up last night and showed everyone who was boss. But that is the, yeah, again, you know, it, well, that's why they call it gambling, Mike. Don't you just want to take a burning piece of metal and put it right into their jugular vein when people say that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's an important note, though, with the tourney coming up, that when you see a, a top team squeak by an opponent, it takes the pressure off them. And the next game, they seem to pay, play much looser, yeah. much more relaxed. And they dominate. I agree because they just got by San Francisco. They got by the Dons by like three, four points the night beforehand. They come back and pound on uh, St. Mary's. Yeah, and and we will see that time and time again uh, come tourney time. Now, uh, what 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 do you have in your magic bag of gambling tricks? Well, let's let's also you know um, transparency and accountability. Uh, I, I gave a loser on Monday. I'm now one and one on the show. The Raptors have an enormous amount of heart, as my friend's mom, Tim Steve's mom, says. They are deep <laughs> as the ocean. Oh, is that what Ooh, Tim? Okay. Is that what Tim Steve's mom says? Okay, yeah. I know Tim Steve. Sure, great comedian. <laughs> yeah, Tim Steve just headlined the Toronto Yuck Yucks a couple weeks ago. Uh, so you know, um, I, I took an L with the Jazz. So let's start there and not pretend that didn't happen. I'm one and one on the show, and I'm about to go two and one, Mike. Yes, right now, I know you are. So let's start with this. Our biggest enemy in sports betting is the juice. If you make every bet with a minus 110 juice, you have to hit 52.9% to break even. You need to hit 56.3% to turn a profit. When playing favorites in NHL, I used to be a big believer in the minus one and a half puck line. I'm also coming off sweeping the board last night in NHL. Predators on the minus one line, cash easily had the over five and a half in hurricane thread wings cashed easily and the great brent butt joined my show oh. yesterday and he gave us the butt pod play of the day which was the over five and a half in vancouver connect new york islanders and the legend brent butt is now one and oh on betting with the bag <laughs> so i was always a believer in the minus one and a half puck line and after being in this game for a long time, I learned it's more important to mitigate losses than to earn bigger scores. And only a couple books will offer you minus one line. So um, for the new gamblers out there, minus one line means if the team you bet on wins by one goal, it is a push. If they win by two goals, you get that cash. You simply don't want to lose money when the team you're betting on wins the game. So many books don't give you the minus one. Many, many books don't give you minus one. There's only a couple books out there that actually give you a minus one line. So I use a minus one calculator that I will put on the Rob Mike Richards Twitter feed right after oh. this show. Okay. San Jose Sharks are a mess. They're goaltending, whether it be Martin Jones or Eric or Aaron Dell has been atrocious. It got Pete the Bo- cost Pete DeBoer his job. This is all Doug Wilson's fault. The blame should fall on his shoulders, not DeBoer. DeBoer got a job right away because this is Doug Wilson's Fault. They've been bad all season long, but in February they lose Thomas Hurdle to a knee injury done for the season. They lose top pair defenseman Carlson to a thumb injury on February 15th. Both players out for the season. And then last game against the Avalanche, they lose their captain Logan Couture to a head injury. They also found out they're not going to be playing the rest of their home games in front of no fans after Santa Clara County announced a ban on large gatherings. Wow. They're 
in the draft lottery, they'd be happy to completely lose out, heighten their chances at the number one pick. It all adds up to it sucks to be a San Jose Shark right now, and the Blackhawks are an angry group. They put a four-game winning streak together. They were hoping to play meaningful games down the stretch, possibly sneak into the playoffs that was sidetracked with losses at Detroit and at home to St. Louis. Over the weekend, Kane having another big year. Taves having a bounce-back season. Seah has 20 goals. Kuba League, 29 goals. The Brinkat Strom round out that top six group that is skilled. They're dealing with injuries on defense. Gustafson uh, was traded to the Flames. I pull out my minus one calculator, Mike, and I make $200 NHL bets. So I type it in, my, my minus 165 money line. That's from Sports Interaction. My plus 171 puck line from Sports Interaction. So that means that I put $125 on the money line. I put $75 on the puck line. The odds that are created on the minus one line is a plus 102, Mike. And I'm on the Chicago Blackhawks minus one at plus 102. I love it, Dave. What do you think? What do you? Because I love the breakdown, too, because I think San Jose, as we've talked about on this show, uh, coming from wh- how good they used to be, uh, but they have aged. They have not, uh, the, in terms of um, you know f- new blood and and the things that you need to do at the at the end of that cycle. But that cycle hasn't hit yet. They are uh, plummeting towards the ground. And as much as I'm a Martin Jones fan, I agree with he's he's had a very tough time. It doesn't seem to matter who's in goal. That's not a good place to be. So I like your pick. Heading against the Sharks, Jimmy, might be a pretty good uh, bet all around just because they start a four-game road trip uh, and the Blackhawks are the easiest uh, card on that schedule where they go to St. Louis, Dallas, and Colorado. And then, as you mentioned, they come home to what will be an empty arena uh, for the remainder of possibly the season. Uh, I, I'm not saying the Sharks are going 0 for the season, but the Sharks are going to make a pretty good case to uh, to lottery out, so to speak, and maybe get one of those top three picks. Yeah, without a doubt. And another big part in this game is the Sharks have spectacular penalty killing. The Blackhawks score more goals five on five than any other team. Their power play is weak, 14.5% power play. They are a five on five squad that relies on quickness. That's the Sharks' Achilles' heel. You know they 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 can play with teams with spectacular power plays, and the teams that are very good five on five are where they get hurt. This Blackhawks team, two point nine three goals per game with a fourteen point five percent power play. The Blackhawks are the perfect team at home, angry to take care of business tonight. No, oh, I love it. And by the way, on Monday night, I'm watching that uh, Raptors game, and it's like. It, everything that you went in and how you capped that game was 100% correct. I was completely on board. I just looked at that Raptors team, including a Norm Powell that goes down in the first two minutes. And yet, it's like they have these batteries that no one else has. They kept, they they played not only with the heart of a champion, they played with the heart of like like bionic people. I don't know how they can do, they almost blew the lead in the fourth quarter. They still came back, shut the Shut the Jazz down for the last, like, five minutes. Uh, I, I, if someone saw that coming or, or predicted that, then it's nice that they're related to Kreskin because I don't think anyone saw that. That was crazy. Crazy. Well, watching that game, it certainly had you believing in this team come playoff time, especially yeah. with the issues that the Bucks are having right now. It certainly, certainly, I mean, that was the finest performance of the season for me uh, that I've seen the Raptors produce. And is, is, uh, so Tim Steve's mom says, Heart, heart like, no deep, deep like the ocean. Oh, deep like the ocean. That's very. That's, that's pretty deep. It's deeper. I'll tell you, it's deeper. <laughs> yeah, than, it's deep, man. It's it's deeper than than Tim gets. I know that. His is shallow as the yeah, a, a puddle <laughs> on the street. <laughs> Bag, you're the best man. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you again on Friday. We cross our fingers because let's get that paper. Yes, love you guys. Let's get that cash. Thank you so much for having.